Welcome to a brand new episode of the Totally Indian Football Show. I'm your host Sudhu, and today, well, I must say that I had two guests who had confirmed for this particular show, and both of them cancelled on me in the last minute. But I must thank and be ever grateful to our dear friend Sudhat Subhapati, who's joined me on this show. And uh, literally in half an hour before, I think, while we were going into recording, I asked him, "Can you, you know, are you free to join?" And he said, "Yes." And thank you, Sudhat Sudhat Subhapati. For all those who don't know, uh, you must know him. He He runs an academy called CFCI in Bombay and much active in Bombay football grassroots especially. So that's so glad to have you on the show and thank you so much for joining. Pleasure is mine, Sijo. Happy to be part of uh, the podcast today. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, looking even I'm looking forward to it because I am very well underprepared for this particular show. But I'm sure talking to Sadat, uh, we'll have some great insights and talk about Indian football. Well, Indian football always gives us uh, topics to talk about, so that's not a problem. Let's start with a bit of ISL news itself. Well, it's been a s- surprising start to many for many teams uh, especially fc goa well on the pitch they were not very good and things are not going well off the pitch as well uh, i'll come back to fc goa in a bit uh, but to start with uh, mumbai city were having a great impressive run i must say but they were stopped uh, by kerala blasters who actually won with a 3-0 thumping victory so that your thoughts on that uh, i mean Kerala Blasters are still a team that's still trying to get back to their hundred percent, you know, performance. And uh, here they are; they just uh, hounded and blasted off the the team to beat this season. Uh, and with what a fashion that they did, three nil. Okay, I think uh, right from the onset of the game, I think Kerala Blasters looked like a completely different outfit. I mean, uh, uh, earlier on in the game as well, they were you know pressing a lot. They were. They were looking a completely different outfit. They were full of confidence. Uh, uh, that was a welcome surprise, of course, against a formidable team like Mumbai City. I didn't really expect Kerala to, you know, turn up so good. Uh, starting off with that uh, a scorcher of a goal by Samad, I think, was a brilliant finish. I think around the 27th or 28th minute of the game, and uh, you know, followed it up, of course, with Alvaro getting the second one. So I think. Uh, all in all, Kerala had a very, very great, very, very good day that day, and I think also Mumbai. Most of the things went downhill. Uh, also, uh, Matuda fall getting a red card, uh, you know, conceding three goals, which is something that you don't really associate with Mumbai City over the last two years now. Uh, but I'm sure that Mumbai are a, are a champion side, and and I come from Mumbai too, so of course there is that sort of affinity towards the team as well. So I think they will they will surely come back, and uh, it's still very early days in the league. A lot of matches remaining, and uh, I think this will be something that uh, we'll be looking forward to about how Mumbai actually make a comeback uh, in the coming games as well. And I think this is just a minor blip uh, in their journey. I think the episode before this, I mean, the last one, of course, we did with uh, Mr. Joshua Lewis, who's the CEO of King Cree. But one before that, I did with Arco, if I'm not wrong. And we were doing an ISL roundup, and uh, we covered a bit of all the teams. But there were complaints from Kerala Blasters fans that we didn't, uh, you know, speak a bit more about that team. I think rightly so that they asked the question now, especially with uh, some great performance that they've been showing us, and especially the last one. So, that your thoughts on this particular team? How do you? see Kerala Blasters probably going ahead with the season i'm sure this would definitely boost their momentum going ahead no, i i completely agree i think uh, right now i think fifth in the table uh, they've had a very very good run in the last five games i think around two wins three draws so i mean they they are they are right now i think probably peaking at a right stage is what i would say uh, again kerala has been a team that's always had ups and downs every season you really don't know which kerala blasters would turn up which year uh looks like this could be uh, you know one of their years uh, to turn up in the top four but uh, it's going to be a lot of competition you see hyderabad playing really well uh, jamshedpur you know you re- again it's similar to kerala you really don't know which jamshedpur will turn up on what day uh, they kind of completely uh, in a way uh, 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 outplayed orissa uh, but then lost out uh, to mumbai 4 to conceding three goals very early on in the game so uh, again it's going to be a very formidable uh, or a very competitive isl this year and i think if kerala continue the way they did and and the victory against mumbai city will surely give them a lot of confidence because uh, again it's a it's a team that's right on the top of the table to win against mumbai city is not an easy task and uh, and and, and they have already done that so going into into the further games i'm sure uh, uh, kerala blasters would look to you know rake up more wins 
uh, and i think i think uh, one game that i'm particularly looking forward to or you could say two games that i'm particularly looking forward to is kerala versus jamshedpur uh, on uh, on the 26th and kerala versus hyderabad which is on the 9th of jan so both these games i'm uh, uh, looking forward to because both of, both of these teams have been doing really well in this year's isl so let's hope for the best yeah Yeah, do you have any thoughts or word on Sahal because this guy has been, you know, hounded by uh, experts and fans for maybe not giving or not performing up to his mark, but this season it is do you think this is his season because we've seen some brilliant goals from him and especially even against Mumbai City he got another. I think uh, unfortunately Sahal Sahal has been hounded by a lot of expectations uh, particularly so because of his, you know, stellar start to his national team career uh, the way you know he's developed as a player i think there are a lot of expectations on him uh, i know and, and 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 it is fair for any fan to have expectations on their players but i think somewhere uh, you know i feel sahal is uh, is not being uh, you know overweighted by the expectations this year it, it looks as if he's a little bit more free mentally is uh, is into a good space and it, it really it really showed in the game against mumbai city but now it's all about consistency isn't it because it's all about whether he could continue to maintain the same tempo Uh, in the coming games as well, and uh, hope that he creates the same sort of impact. And sometimes it's just not about goals or assists; it's just generally about the uh, the grit you show in every game. You know the tenacity you show in every game to go and get the ball, uh, to press again and win the ball after losing it in the midfield. So somewhere he is he is becoming more matured as a player, and that's going to really help Kerala Blasters and not just Kerala, of course the national team as well. Where you know he's not been able to live up to the expectations after the uh, stellar performance. i think in the intercontinental cup in ahmedabad he was like really good uh, uh with this game and i think i hope he continues uh, the way he is and i hope he maintains that sort of a level i mean also i think sidhu i will attribute it to the fact that you know after the isl they don't really get much of game time exposure if, if your team doesn't really qualify for the continental championships you really don't end up playing those many games so i think somewhere if if, if sahal gets that sort of exposure maybe gets out on loan to another club or uh you know plays somewhere else i think he needs more matches he needs more game time and and that will really help him to uh, you know explore himself better or or understand his game more better what i Yeah well I'm sure the last point does make sense that you made but I'm not sure how happy or how sad or how frustrated it has made Kerala Blaster fans for a few mentioning that probably in search of game time he should join another club well let's see if uh, they actually finish in top 4 and that gives Sahal much more game time yeah, I didn't, I didn't maybe not a club soon. in India though could be even abroad as well uh, maybe yeah. he could play another league I, I, I don't want to disappoint any Kerala Blaster fan watching this but I, I mean to say another club as well just for him to develop uh, individually right. as a player Right, absolutely. I think most of our young players need. I mean, all of our players need game time. Talking about game time and talking about things off the pitch right now, I must say, coming to Goa FC, Goa. Right. Apart from, I think their problem started when the season started. I must say because it was going well until then. Uh, they won the Duran Cup, and we were all looking forward to a team that would go in for the title. And you know, most of us stated that this is a team that would probably uh, fight for the title, and they would. you know go far in that race for the ISL title or the shield but they've started with disappointing they had three losses back to back and then they jumped back for three points against east bengal but it was again a draw against hyderabad and things have not been going well off the pitch as well that i mentioned earlier uh, starting with the issue that they faced among the locals uh, where their training ground was invaded by i think the panchayat or the local political uh, party over there if i'm not wrong you know they came and dug up their ground and stuff like that so fc goa has really invested in that ground and somebody for coming uh, one fine day for some political reason and political gains just doing that up it's definitely a big huge loss not just financially but also for the work and effort that they've put sadat you being from bombay i'm sure you when you read about this somewhere even you related to the fc goa story right because being in bombay and in football here uh, you must have encountered such things on and off in not just bombay city anywhere across india you will have run ins with you know uh, the local authorities and you will have issues happening i think goa have done well to you know somewhere uh, figure solutions to problems i mean they they have been Laced with many problems, I think probably in the last two, two and a half years, we saw the AFC Champions League as well. You know, they did really well. They were up against some really formidable opponents, and uh, you know, I thought 
they may not even withstand or even, they may not be even able to compete at that level but they did quite well i mean uh, uh, some of the games were uh, i think against al rayyan for example where they they got a draw or even for example against uh, persepolis uh, the 2-1 where they lost the game they, they were really good uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know coming up as a team so i think they have found solutions uh, these are some problems which you know uh, uh, Which, which which are unfortunate to be honest because you know having the government dugging up or the local authorities dugging up they did a lot of work on their ground and that was quite visible on the tweets as well which i uh, which i saw from i think uh, uh, one of the goa representatives online so that's unfortunate what's happened already with uh, their coach as well now that's another uh, rather unfortunate thing for fc goa especially to ha- for that to happen mid season is uh, something really unfortunate for ivan fernando to leave mid season go to uh, atk mohan bagan is something which Uh, is going to impact them a lot, but uh, I, I just hope they find solutions because they they are a very good side, and you know, uh, be it Juan Fernando, be it any any coach there, they've always uh, tried to promote youngsters. They've always had this uh, a good ambience around the club as a team. Uh, but I think also from a, a management perspective, also this could be a a lesson for them because somewhere I think uh, uh, they didn't see this coming. They didn't anticipate. uh this coming that you know someone of a uh, uh, stature of ivan fernando will leave the club midway and i know it's very difficult to anticipate something like this but somewhere i felt that uh, as a as, as a management as as someone it's it's a good lesson learned for them that you know uh, in football anything can happen like on the field uh, it's the same same of the field as well so it's something that they would surely learn from and I, and i think goa will come back stronger uh, in the years to come so and, and maybe in this league as well in this year as well uh they as i said it's still very early days uh, it's very difficult uh, to mark out clubs that you know will not qualify uh, maybe i know one of the clubs which which we think uh, could be east bengal who have not done that greatly and even their coaches agreed with the same maybe east bengal looks the only club that's right now a little out of place in the isl but otherwise you know i would not uh, you know single out fc goa that you know they don't look like a side this year they have not had great a great outing until now but i hope that they will uh, you know kind of resurrect that and come back stronger uh, in the second part of the isl season yeah absolutely i think that's what even the fc goa fans would hope for uh, and let's let's wait and watch because this is a team that's particularly done well on and off the pitch since the start in the, since the inception of isl uh, i must also add that i think uh, if i'm not wrong clifford miranda would be taking over as uh, as the interim manager for the rest of the season and i think we have now one more indian coach at helm right we we've already seen uh, Kala Jamil taking on East North East United, and now we will see Clifford up there doing his job. Uh, but I really hope, uh, you know, I have personal, like I always mentioned, I have personal biases towards FC Goa, and I really hope that they come out of this uh, with flying colours and not the other way around. Uh, but definitely an unfortunate incident where in midway, like uh, Sadat mentioned, now we've. we've tried to get some folks to talk about this in detail uh from the club itself but we are waiting on some responses if it happens well and good if not uh we may just get some more guys who've been following the club to probably uh talk about this issue in detail uh so stay tuned for those episodes now you mentioned sadat that you are eagerly waiting to watch a game of kerala blasters that's going to play on 26th of december there's something else that we're all looking forward to that kick starts on the 26th and that's the i league like i mentioned earlier we did speak to joshua lewis who is the ceo of king cray fc and uh, it's the first club since 2017 from mumbai to be playing in the i league uh, they really impressed us all in the second division uh, went till the last minute but uh, drew against uh, rajasthan and they lost out on the title but uh, so that let me start with you on king cray first because being from bombay how happy and ecstatic does it make you to see a club from here uh, from the city being in the i league I mean, it's like that. Uh, it's like you know, Lagan movie, right? Where we all wait for rain to come, and it finally comes at the end. It's somewhere similar, you know. Uh, it's a great feeling to see King Cray playing in the I League. I didn't really expect, you know, uh, after what happened uh, in the qualification that they are not qualified. So everyone was obviously like, you know, they're not going to qualify. And uh, uh, again, yeah, Chennai City uh, unfortunately not able to participate and. and uh, uh, king cray coming in which is a blessing in disguise for uh, mumbai and maharashtra football both uh, considering the fact that you know maharashtra was a hot bed of football we had so many clubs now we just have one in mumbai city and now it's great to see king cray also coming in because there is a plethora of talent in mumbai all they need is exposure 
unfortunately they haven't been getting that uh, over the last uh, uh, few years and uh, it's it's very very good that now they will be finally able to represent kankare and one good thing that i've observed about kankare is they are actually giving a, a lot of chances to mumbai based players so kudos to them for that kudos to akil kudos to joshua both of them for you know ensuring that they're giving mumbai players their due and uh, i mean this is it's going to be a challenge it's going to be uh, exciting to see how they play uh, in the i league as well something uh, 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 really exciting to see how they turn up as a team so let's hope uh, uh, kankare uh, uh, does well in this year's i league they do uh, you know they do come out as a team and if if they do that it's only going to be better and good for mumbai and maharashtra football both so hoping they do well so uh, to answer your question completely ecstatic completely happy and uh, only have the best of the wishes for kankare in their i league journey yeah i'm sure how happy that it makes all of us especially the ones who hail from the city moving on with another club that's going to be playing for the first time and they earned the position rightly by winning the second division title rajasthan united a club i think in their second their first year won the state league and in their second year uh, you know ended up as a runners up and then uh, gave a good fight a good performance a good run uh, in the second division and went on to be crowned champions among some really favorites uh, you know and now they are going to be playing in the I league so that a new club it's the first time we have a club representing rajasthan uh, how does that make you as just as a football fanatic i think uh, to be honest we it's, it's it's brilliant right isn't it i mean we've had a club from kashmir we we having a club from telangana andhra now with srinidhi coming in uh, with rajasthan and now it's, i think this is this is what makes the i league so interesting right it's got such wonderful representation of clubs from across india so you'll have you have trau is there neroka i mean you've got clubs from literally across northeast west south east i mean this is this is this is there can't be a better representation of clubs from across india to be honest that's really a uh, uh, wonderful to see you know rajasthan coming in and, and and it's good to see football spreading across uh, the length and breadth of the country so uh, again rajasthan i mean you know did really well in the i league nobody re- i league qualifiers nobody really gave them a chance Uh, with bengaluru united and other top clubs being there but they really uh, 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 you know punched well above their weight and did really well to qualify for the i league uh, again you have vikran sharma who is the technical director there he's been uh, he was really good and now of course he's replaced with uh, uh, francis ponet coming in so i think uh, to be honest rajasthan united as a team have uh, done really well and it's, it's just exciting to see how uh, uh, how they would come out or how they would play in their first season and that would be really exciting to see so hopefully let's hope that you know uh, they they do well and that would only do better for indian football and uh, you know again the very fact that you know rajasthan united for example uh, they joined hands with a local school there and you know they set up a residential academy and then they had this uh, you know we have so many clubs coming out with so much ambition but it's very rare that everybody fulfill their ambition and rajasthan united to be honest was one of those rare clubs which could fulfill that ambition of you know what they marked out on their paper they actually fulfilled it uh, 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 realistically as well to be honest so that's something really exciting to see and you know i'm very happy uh, to see rajasthan united come out and uh, uh, do so well in the i league qualifiers and I, i wish them luck and all the best uh, for the upcoming i league season as well Yeah, absolutely, and I must say that uh, do stay tuned and do follow and subscribe to our show, the Totally Indian Football Show, because you will definitely have these folks uh, coming and joining on the show very soon. Now, Siddharth, talking about new season, we are looking ahead for I League. Definitely, other clubs as well. I mean, Gokulam, Beit, Neroka, Trau, uh, all of these guys would be gearing up for a great season. And I must say that I League. never you know it always exceeds our expectation we were eagerly look forward to it and it always beats our expectation you know all the team performs so well nobody can expect what to actually predict uh, with with the whole season going on and i must say i hope this continues and uh, though it it kind of feels that it's a very step motherly treatment that i league gets uh, but hopefully whatever the road map looks like even kushal das has again stressed on the fact that from 22 2023 to 24 onwards there would be a uh, promotion uh, starting from that year and i we, we definitely hope uh, on merit we see clubs coming up uh, to isl as well i think hope so yeah and i hope the relegation promotion which is you know a promise to i league clubs get delivered 
you know and uh, i hope that happens and that could be really good for indian football as well because uh, that would actually help to you know have smaller stories come out actually to be honest like you know a team like uh, rajasthan united or a king kray would never expect to be one day playing the isl right now at least right now and if if that happens and the relegation promotion happens then everybody has got a chance everybody can have ambitions of you know competing at the topmost tier of indian football so i really hope that happens Yeah, absolutely. And uh, moving on with some more, as I mentioned, Siddharth is from Bombay, and we're talking about new season. Uh, well, the Mumbai season also is. Uh, I think it's already kick started with some of the divisions, and it's soon to kick start some other lower divisions as well. So that you're somebody who's you know knows inside out of Mumbai football. Uh, what updates can you share with us? So I mean, uh, first of all, thank you for <laughs> that introduction. But yeah, I mean. To be honest, uh, Mumbai football—it's uh, great to see. We've not had a match in the MDFA since, or you could call it the MFA now, the Mumbai Football Association, uh, since last year, 2020 February. Uh, after that, this is the first game that happened on December the 15th at Neville Dzuza, where we had uh, a, a second division game, and and now followed it up, of course, with the super division matches that have started as well. So, I think it's great to see that football's resumed in Mumbai. It's a welcome. feeling for most of the mumbai based footballers because they have been uh, devoid of any football action for the last one and a half years uh, they have been missing football they have not been in fitness they have not been in shape so everyone was actually looking forward to when will uh, the mumbai football association league start and i'm just glad that it has started i hope there are no more roadblocks uh, with the new variant of covid coming in again there are there are questions there are clouds on uh, how the league functions in the months to come but i hope uh that we overcome it in the right way and, and i hope the league continues uh because as i said uh we've been there's a big in a big void of action uh for mumbai based footballers over the last uh, so many months you could say literally a year and a half so uh that's great and you know again the one thing if you see siju the number of teams participating has just gone up and that's fantastic to see because one didn't really expect so many teams would actually come out and play again but it's just heartwarming to see that so many teams have come up and registered again for the upcoming season of the league so if you see third division second division we just seeing so many teams that are participating this year and it just goes to show that everybody wants to get back on the field so kudos to the mumbai football association for restarting the league and i hope uh, the league continues and uh, you know uh, uh, sticks to their schedule as well which has been a problem over the many years but i hope i hope that happens uh, in the right way this year so looking forward Uh, one good thing is if you see also what they have done this year is they have registered all the players on the crs system uh, so that's also really good so they are maintaining data they are maintaining uh, you know the player background and all of those things and they are, they the forms have been online this year uh, which is also a refreshing change you don't really know need to go to parel and fill the form physically send someone back and forth uh, so that's another refreshing change so these are small changes and as i said you know i keep saying to everyone that Uh, we, it's, it's like rome's not built in a day similarly you know football's not going to develop in a day or in a week or in a year it's going to take small steps across uh, many years to kind of make it like a proper structure or a proper process so good to see mumbai football association uh, adopting a new process or a new structure Yeah, and while you send in your, you know, kudos to the association, I must also on this show per probably shout, give a shout out to you as well because I think the last little bit of action that we saw was when you conducted, especially for the under twenty, uh, youth championship that you conducted here, and that really gave some game time, some, you know, some action for the boys in the in the city. So great, well done on you on you for that part. hope to hope to see you continue probably we see more u championships uh, in the city as well and uh, well to conclude on that bit uh, i must ask you before i let you go i league is starting we are all eagerly looking forward to and i'm sure you must be wanting to uh, see how kankre performs but if i had to ask you who do you consider some of the favorites to probably for this title that's a a, a good question so i mean favorite i would say maybe tokulum and uh, churchill i'm not much aware about the team compositions for this year in terms i know the squads but i don't really know how the players are going to turn up how much match fitness they are in so of course once the league starts i would be able to give a better answer but uh, to be honest i think uh, 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 from what has been the performance over the many years i think churchill and 
uh, kind of gokulam hold like uh, 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 you know favorable positions at least uh, as far as what i feel so i think uh, my bet is on uh, churchill and gokulam but i think uh, it'll be an exciting season to look at uh, i think this also down glass punjab also playing so they may also uh, be a, a formidable opponent for both these uh, teams so looking forward to see how it happens in 13 13 teams are there right if, if i'm not wrong this year so be exciting to see who comes up so for me as i said churchill and gokulam are two teams that i feel yeah you mentioned round glass punjab we also have a mumbai connection there while in you know coach floyd pinto who is the assistant coach over there and uh, we'll see ashley westwood back in indian football after a successful stint he had with bengaluru fc and i must say it, it looks like a reunion there as well that he's got some uh, proven candidates uh, experienced folks uh, but we all have to wait and watch how they actually perform at uh, at this age and at this probably uh, many years later we'll see them all in action on the field uh like you said so that we really can't put our bet on any team as of now once the league starts we are all in for a surprise of how it pans out uh well we are a month down uh, a month you know gone for isl but we are still in a state to say that it's too early to predict how things going to play out in the rest of the season but we all have to wait and watch and i really hope the off the pitch issues concerning uh, certain clubs really uh hope to get better as as with as the days goes by uh to all the listeners tuning into this show do tune in if you haven't checked out our last episode with mr joshua lewis who is the ceo of king cray fc as they will be soon in action in the i league as well and continue to follow and subscribe and support our show as we'll definitely have some really good episodes coming uh, your way in the coming days and in the coming weeks thank you so much sadat once again for getting on the show uh, thank you for your time thank you for chatting and sharing your insights thank you sir thank you so much Well, to all our listeners, as always, thank you so much for tuning in and showing the love, guys. And some of us, some of you actually tagged us and said, "There's so much happening in Indian football. Why not talk about it?" Well, we are all swamped. We know there's a lot to talk about. Uh, we will definitely talk about all those points that is concerning on and off the pitch in Indian football. Just continue with your love, support, and patience. Follow us on all the audio platforms out there wherever you listen to your podcast. I'm your host, Ajay, and this is the Totally Indian Football Show. Thank you very much. 